This is a shame. Y'all don't want to go talk to all them. <laughs> Got the cameras and everything. I know, man. I, they yeah. they, they should have gave me twenty dollars to come out here. <laughs> You're gonna have all kinds of good stuff saved up for us. Though. Nah, uh, I've been chilling, right? you know, <laughs> ducking and dodging. <laughs> so, um, your position coach is leaving. Yeah, congratulations to him. Got what? head coach and jobs. What did you think when you heard that news? Uh, I, I, we seen it coming a long time ago. I mean, we. At the beginning of the season, we already knew that he, this was probably going to be his last season here. So it was no news to me. It was I'm more happy for him. What, what do you mean by that? Just because you thought he was a guy who was oh, you moving know, up the ranks? Yeah, you know, he came here and he did what he did, helped the defense improve. And I mean, I talked to him before. He always said that he wanted to be a head coach one day. So I knew that it was going to come sooner or later. I mean, he definitely works for it. He's definitely a hardworking man. So I knew he was going to get it. What has he told you about Coach Shiano? Uh, nothing. We haven't had any talks about that. Have you talked to? Have you guys met Coach Shiano? Obviously. Uh, I met with him yesterday, but it was for other reasons. It wasn't about that. But I just, I just know who he is. You know, from his past experiences, and Coach Meyer did introduce him to the team as the new defensive coordinator. He gave us a few little words, but nothing serious. I mean, how hungry are you guys right now? Uh, obviously, <laughs> this is a little bit different from last year where you knew you guys were in the playoffs. Um, but how do you guys utilize this um, as kind of fire just because of that loss this season? Well, I mean, we look at it like this. Notre Dame is a really good team. You know, they got a bunch of talent on their team. I, I think uh, one of the coaches was telling us that they had like nine draftable players or something on their team. So it's, it's going to be a great game. I mean, the atmosphere is going to be great. I mean, no, no, we didn't make it into the college playoff, but, you know, for some of the seniors, this is their last game here. And, I mean, we've been – Shoot, for me, I've been here with them since they got here. So, you know, it's like we definitely going to play our hearts out for each other because this might be the last time a bunch of us will be together as one team. So that's the biggest motivation to go out there. We'll give it one last hard swing and come out with a win for the seniors. Is it is it hard, though, Tybus, to watch the playoff unfold, having <laughs> lived it, you know, and now you're not living it and knowing – how intense that is and what it's like. <laughs> uh, is it hard to watch? Yeah, it is, you know, because, you know, of course, every team wants to be in it, but, I mean, unfortunately, it just didn't happen for us this year. And, I mean, I, I salute the four teams that's in. I wish them all the best of luck. I mean, I ain't going to sit here and tell you that. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say it, but y'all know how I feel about it. I mean, yeah, I would love to have been in it, but, you know, it is what it is. It's just how it goes. I mean, just got to make the best out of what we have now. Do you want Michigan State to win it because they're a Big Ten team, or do you not care? No wins? comment. <laughs> no comment on that one. <laughs> no comment. Because they're like, you're right, they're, they're a Big Ten, but they're also the team that beats you. They're no comment. Right here, you know, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> The first time I ever did that in the media, no comment. Yeah, really. Because if I go on that rant, y'all will be sitting here for another 15 minutes. Save it to the end. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the defense this year as a whole, obviously we're just saying you guys didn't quite get where you wanted to be as a team. Mm -hmm. But you have one more game left for this defense. How do you think this defense as a whole played this year? I think you guys are like second in the nation in fewest points allowed per game, <laughs> stuff like that. Is I'm, it even maybe even better than last year? How, how good's the defense been? Well, I mean, you know, the offense was struggling early on the year, so the defense was kind of – we kind of had to carry the team. So, I mean, just we've just been trying to get better every week, and I feel like we've definitely progressed in that. I mean, these past couple games, it's been about more so the pass defense. With a pass. It started off with the bad run defense, but a good pass, and then it flipped towards the end of the season. So it's just about trying to go out there and make sure that it's neither one of those. And so we stop the pass and the run for this one final game that we have for, for this season. I mean, like I said, although – it's definitely progressed for run defense. Cause I know we started off slow in the run defense. I know the pass defense kind of went down a little bit, but we've been out here working on that every day. So that's going to hopefully show up in this last game. And speaking of your opponent, um, I don't know how much you guys have been looking at them specifically right now, but um, yeah, an offense that can definitely oh, yeah. produce and a wide oh, yeah. receiver that is really oh, yeah. uh, helpful, <laughs> I would say, on their end. Yeah, he's he, he got wheels. He reminds me of Devin Smith. Real fast receiver, they like to get him the ball. I mean, their offense kind of reminds me of a lot of our offense when I watch it. I mean, it's, so it's like it's not nothing. They're not doing anything that we haven't seen. I mean, we see it every day of practice, so that's kind of the benefit that we get out of that. It's just going out there and stopping it. <laughs>
Travis Cardell's not really made a secret of his plans uh, moving forward. If, if this is uh, uh, if this is the end, how, how do you how do you think Cardell, with from everything from his freshman year through last year, how do you think he will be remembered, or, or how should he be remembered? He should be. Re he's gonna definitely be remembered. His number one thing he's gonna remember for is definitely that tweet that he put out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna forever be said around this campus. That's number one. But he's definitely gonna be remembered for for being like a national championship quarterback. I mean, he definitely won the championship, and for him. He hasn't lost the game as a starting quarterback, so I think that's pretty good under his books. But the tweet still goes down as his Oh, own. the tweet is, it will be remembered when our kids' kids come here. They're still going to talk about it because it was the most out of the blue thing I've ever seen in my life. And it was funny. It was just, hey, it's funny nowadays. It wasn't funny at the time, but when, it's one of those things when you look back on it, it's going to forever be funny. <laughs> how, how has he handled the last couple weeks of the season? I mean, it. He obviously expected to be playing and leading you guys through the year. You know him better than anybody else. I mean, has he been down at all? No. Twelve is still the same twelve that I've been on. He he comes in, he does what he has to do. His his favorite thing, his favorite thing to do now is when he goes against the number one defense, when he's the scout team quarterback for at the end of practice, mm -hmm. he's he likes to motivate. <laughs> He finds a way to motivate the scout team by saying, hey, y'all, let's go out here. If we do good, they're going to play us. They're going to start us in the game. So <laughs> that's his new joke to the whole uh, scout team offense. So he's definitely taking that role on. He's doing a great job. He's still threading that ball like I know he can. So he's definitely just getting better. He takes, he's taking his practices and just basically preparing himself for the next level if that's what he does. Is he having some success against that number one defense at all? <laughs> I tell you what, he's – Yesterday he got me on the pass and I was I was upset at myself because he's never gonna get me but he got me and it's just like I, I could I lost some sleep last night just the fact that he completed this pass it's ridiculous so yeah he's definitely he's definitely making the most of it. Tyre, sorry if you've been asked this I just walked in but uh, what when you look at Notre Dame what you've seen of them offensively what jumps out at you that you're gonna have to be uh, well, ready for here? Well I do boys. know that they got a very athletic quarterback. And he can throw that ball. <laughs> as well, he can throw that ball. So that he make every throw. Uh, they got the one raw receiver, number seven. Yeah, him. He's like Devin Smith. He's fast. He catches a lot of deep balls, and they, but he's somehow, some way, he finds a way to get behind defenders and catch it and score. So that's definitely a priority. And they definitely got a good running game. I see they little running, but the running back, 33, he's a tough guy. He runs the ball pretty hard. So we we definitely got our hands full with a lot of a lot of weapons that they got. But I'm sure we'll we're gonna actually figure it out and we we'll find a way to stop it. Travis, I, I know you're focused on your game, but is there any part of you that's curious to see how Michigan State matches up with Alabama? No comment. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. Who cares? I don't care about that. I really don't. It's really got nothing to do with us that I could care less. <laughs> Tyvis, you, uh, you've had your degree for a while. You have a national championship ring. Um, you've been a starter here for a long time. When you think about what you set out to do when you arrived at Ohio mm -hmm. State and what you have done, how does that match up? I tell you, I can check off a lot of – a lot of things on my on my list. It's a lot of things I, I actually done that a couple of times. Checked off. I got a lot of things that I accomplished. I mean, number one thing was definitely to get the degree for mother, and believe it or not, the second thing was to become a captain. And I, when I got elected captain, that was like like a big relief for me. So there's a lot of things that I wanted to do when I was here that I actually have accomplished already. How does that feel when? I mean, I know you're not done having goals and wanting to do things, right. but when you can go through your time and and think about that you have checked off a lot of boxes how does that make you feel uh it's, i'm very happy with it i mean like i say every, every time you achieve a goal it's like a you jump up and down you know you do your happy dance about it but i mean you set new goals and you just you work towards those new goals after you, you celebrate the one goal that you got and then you create some new goals and you build to that how do you think uh, the transition will be it's not only Senior, great senior class, but a number of juniors today depart. This, the face of this thing is going to turn quite a bit. Yeah. From, from this to next. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we they, they definitely have a great coaching staff. I'm going to definitely say that. And they do a great job of recruiting. And the backups have 
they've been using these practices, these early practices to get the backups a lot of work. And they actually are doing pretty good in practice right now. So the future is definitely bright for them. I mean, it, yeah. No, no, no. I don't think Ohio State ever fall off because there's so many people that want to go here and they do a great job of bringing in so much good talent that it's never going to fall off. I mean, they're going to definitely get the they're going to get the right players and they're going to get the right scheme set up to make this team succeed, if that makes sense. How old are you? I'm 21. 21. Yeah, I'll be 22 in February. So when you were a little guy, <laughs> is it? do you remember the 02 season? For Ohio State, that yeah, national championship. Yeah, I, yeah, like I was eight. watching. Yeah, I was watching in my grandmother's house. They went in double <laughs> overtime. It was a like a controversy pass interference call, where right? we got the call and we ended up winning the game. So that, go Bucks. You're not too like you remember. <laughs> you actually do remember watching that game. Yes, I do. That's when Willis McGay he got his knee messed up and I was scarred for life. Because it was the nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I thought I was like, he's done. His career is over with. The next thing I know, boom, he's an NFL yeah. player. <laughs> so were you an Ohio State fan? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you like? How excited were you? Oh, oh man, I was I was jumping up and down for joy. I had all my Ohio State gear on. I wore it for a week straight. Wow. It's kind of how I was when I won the hat last year. I mm -hmm. didn't take the hat off for a long time. It's kind of like that when they wanted to know, too. So <laughs> we know, I mean, Ohio State's had this long, crazy history in Arizona. Mm -hmm. They've been in the Fiesta Bowl so many mm -hmm. times. Um, what do you remember about the 06 game with Troy and being undefeated? And Well, I mean, you're jumping around in 02. How are you jumping? <laughs> I wasn't you jumping around. Uh, of course, I wasn't jumping around in 06. I was mad. It was one of those ones. I just turned it off. I can't believe this. And they ended up losing. It. How long? But that, so you were like 12 then? So you're a little older, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So were you mad about that? Yeah, I was mad. Like how long did that stay? I was in, look, I was in school that day, and we was going around. Everybody was talking about who they was going. I said, look, Ohio State going to win this game because it's just, you know, it's the best team in America. And they went out there and they lost, and I was just so crushed. <laughs> I was just like, oh. I was like, didn't want to go to school for like a week, but my mom wasn't having that. So I had to go to school. She had, she yeah, yeah. yeah. So as long as... <laughs> The 06. 06. So as Florida. long as we're, we're living State. past <laughs> games? <laughs> no, I mean, 06 season. Right. Yeah. But, Tavis, so as long as we're, we're living past games, did you see the last Ohio State-Notre Dame matchup, or ironically, in the Fiesta Bowl? Hey, yeah, I, you see, I seen that on Twitter. I seen, I actually watched the clip. Is that the one where Ted took it to the house on him? Yeah, yeah I was like, that boy's fast. Yeah, I, was, I watched that on uh, Twitter the other day. I, I didn't watch that game, but, I, you know. I seen the clips of it, so we end up winning that game, though. So you know, <laughs> and uh, obviously this is not a new question and it's not a new reality, but the fact that your coach here now mm -hmm. is the guy who made twelve-year-old Tyvis Powell cry <laughs> after what happened in that national championship game, like is that is that still? Are you torn at all about that? That you know, I look at him kind of funny about it, yeah, because he could have just you know we could have. He's from Ohio. He should have just let us win it, you know? But you know, I understand that, you know, so he had to do what he had to do to help his team win. And congratulations to him on that one. He did a good job. Seems like he does a great job when it's in the national championship game. He does a great job getting teams prepared. So we're talking about all this stuff. Do you ever think about or reflect on the idea that you were young Tyvis mm -hmm. in Ohio? That was a long time ago. Watching those games. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and being so caught up in it. Uh -huh. And now you're playing in those kind of games and you won a national championship and there were yeah. kids in Cleveland, the next generation of young Tyvuses, feeling the same way. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, as someone yeah. who's growing up being a fan, do you think about that? That how much little kids and that kind I of thing? I never thought about it like that. But the way you put it, I mean, yeah, maybe we've inspired, you know, inspired kids, you know. It's definitely a bunch of kids that's been running around Ohio like, yeah, Ohio State won, and maybe that might be the spark that they need to always want to come to Ohio State. You know, it might inspire them like it inspired me. And if that is the case, then I really can leave this place and with and go to – I could die because that's all I want to do is inspire somebody. If I can inspire one person on this earth to ch to do good, then, you know, I can, I can – I'm. I can rest in peace. If, no, I'm not saying I'm dying, y'all. I'm in good health. <laughs> I'm in good health. But, you know, that's just like my number one goal in life. Hey, Tyvis, you talked about uh, the way that Urban Meyer prepares yeah. teams for bowl games. What is it about the, the way he handles practice and the way he prepares you?
the way he motivates you. I think the, moti- the ma- motivation thing when it comes to the postseason is probably a big one. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's not, I, I would say that since this year in particular, he's made a, he's done a great job of like making it fun. You know, sometimes practice could be long and drag on and on, but he's like cut it down. So like from what it was in the season to it is in the bowl practice, it's like cut down and it gives more people to have, it gives the young guys a chance to get more work because, you know, next year is coming around, unfortunately, and they have to be able to play. So I think that seeing the young guys go out there and, and like, compete the way they do, it kind of brings the new spark in. And then at the practice, he always do this thing where, like, he makes linemen catch footballs from Cardale or something like that. And we got sprints on the line, so it's, like, always fun and stuff like that. You, you do realize this may <laughs> be the first time that Urban Meyer and fun have been mentioned in this <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> that was funny. I mean, he's a very serious guy, but he definitely knows how to have fun and take care of his players. So, <laughs> that's funny. Have uh, talked so much about the, the grind as the name of this season. Mm-hmm. Was that the right name for this? Yeah, it's definitely been a grind. I know it has been a grind, but shouldn't it have been called like the party or something? No, so that it wasn't a daily reminder of how hard it was going no, to be. To no, this no, thing again? no. The party is in. It's when every, anything you grind for, it, it feels better when you. When you work for something and then achieve it, rather than just partying your way through it, so the grind was definitely the right thing because it was a grind. It still is a grind, and the grind has not been complete yet. It probably it will be when we win this last game. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I asked Urban about you know whether you guys will be up for this game, mm-hmm. having gone through the playoff last year, and he oh, used yeah. the Michigan game as an indicator. So oh You yeah. always look for indicators. Yeah. The way you played at Michigan mm-hmm. is an indication of that. Exactly. Is it any indication that what happened with Adolphus, what happened with JT during the year, Joey and Jalen and some guys were suspended for the first game, is any of that an indication that anything was off with this team at any point this year? Or would you just chalk those up as individual things that happen to guys sometimes? I'm just individual things that happen to people. I mean, people make mistakes every day. Um, I'm not going to bash nobody about it because – I believe that Jesus said, "If you ain't, if you committed, if you have not committed sin, then throw the first stone." So I'm not gonna throw no stone because I mean everybody does things. It's just they just happen to get caught at the wrong place at the wrong time. So I'm not, I'm not gonna bash that. I mean, the team would definitely roll on. I mean, as you can see, I think it brings people, it brings the team closer together because you know you have to feel fulfill those roles that may be missing, and it allows people to step up and just I don't know just. People depend on each other more, so I think that's what I'm not going to say it helped, it hurt us in any way. I might say it actually helped us. So you would say overall focus, whatever, of this team mm-hmm. from game one to what will be game, the last bowl game, mm-hmm. was good? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> nobody, has, nobody has been away from it. Everybody came in with the same missions. Which offensive lineman is the best at catching passes? <laughs> Who caught, I'm trying to think who caught the ball. No, you, you're, you're going through which one caught it, not which one is the best. Yeah, you, yeah I don't know. You know, I don't they, know. they all dropped it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was only one player that caught it. He, like, called out one player, and he had to catch it. But he was a defense alignment that had okay. to catch it. And he, he only dropped one. He had to catch ten. It was ten balls thrown, and he caught nine out of the ten. Okay. And that's because Urban Coach Meyer was cheating. He got he cheated. He did. Cheat. Cause he like jumped in the way and like oh. like when Cardell threw the ball, he like did one of these and then stepped back. So it's like oh, it was like right there. So got it. Jump. It's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> how, how do you uh, look at a bowl trip, Tyvis? Is it like business trip or are you looking, a bowl? Looking to get there and have fun. Look, a bowl trip is definitely always a business trip. I mean, it could be it could go one or two ways. There's only one reason that it could be fun. The only reason a bowl trip is fun is if you win the game. If you go there and lose, it's not fun at all. Nothing you did was fun. You look at it like this was a complete waste of time. So you got to go there to win the game. If you win the game, then you look back and say, you know what, we went bowling or we went skating as a team. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. But if you, you, when, you win, when you lose the game, you're so mad that you lost the game that you don't think about nothing else. So it's all about, it's all about the game. Do you have fun when you're bowling? No, oh, what's happening? no, no fun. you know what, it goes so fast, <laughs> it goes so fast that you only pay attention to it, it's all about the game, when you get to the game, when you win, then you say, you know what, that bowling game was fun, <laughs> that bowling was fun we did.
Good. Is it weird to be in a place for a week? You know, y'all weren't like in Blacksburg for a week this year. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Like, nah, cause see, I was in the I was in the Orange Bowl and we was there for a week. Yeah, but our, bowl games are different from the regular season. You know, like it, how do you how do you deal with that? Just you know. Oh, like like preparing for it's one yeah. team for a long time. Yeah, like it's just like it was preparing for Virginia Tech at the beginning of the season, seeing the same thing over and over and over and over. So when you get to the game, it's like second nature to you. So I actually appreciate it. But it does, after a while, it does get like, can we just play the game already? <laughs> but we ain't there yet. We didn't get to that part yet.